almost everyone is talking about AI and its impact today. Several companies have already incorporated AI into their tools. Developers are using AI to improve their development workflow. And the lives of several people all over the world have been positively impacted by AI. So it's really the talk of the town, especially in the tech ecosystem. Even I myself have used AI on several projects and continue to be amazed at how powerful it is. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Grok and Zuplo to build a startup name generator API that uses AI to dynamically generate possible names to call your startup based on the business description you've added. The end goal here is to have an API that other developers can make a call to when they want to think of a name to name their startup, or they can even integrate this API into their project. So in order for this to work effectively, I'm going to secure this API by adding an authentication key, add rate limits to it, and also add a developer portal where these developers can come to uh, read about the API, find their API key there, and also test the API directly on the console. But before we get into that, let's talk a bit about what Grok and Zuplo is. Grok is a generative AI solutions company and the creator of the LPU inference engine, which is actually the fastest language processing accelerator currently available in the market. And if you actually compare Grok to ChatGPT, what I noticed was that Grok had a faster response time. And I'm not joking. I actually tested this out by asking Grok and ChatGPT the same question. And as you can see, Grok's response is actually a lot faster. On the other hand, Zuplo is a cost-effective API management tool that saves developers time, money, engineering effort when it comes to building, shipping, and managing APIs. It proxies your backend so that you can add authentication, rate limiting, monetization, and so much more. Like the, the opportunities and the things you can do with Zuplo are actually endless. You should check it out. So now that you know about Grok and Ziplo, let's get right into using them to build the Startup Name Generator API. The first thing we're going to do is go to portal.ziplo.com. Here, I'm going to click on New Project, add a name for my project, which is going to be Startup Name Generator. And I'll click on Create Project. Now that the project has opened up, the first thing I'll do is create a route. To do that, I'll click on routes.json, and I'm going to click on the Add Route button. Here, I will update the summary to Startup Name Generator. And then I'm going to also tweak the path to generate startup names. I'll also convert the, well, I've changed the, the method, the default method, which is get here to post. And then finally, what I'll do in this section is update the request handler from URL forward to function, because I actually want to write the code that is going to handle this API. And then I'm going to create a new module for this. So I'll click on new module, then I'll call this startup and then click create. This will automatically create a TypeScript file for me where I can add the code that will handle my API. So before we do that, let's go to Grok's documentation. We're going to be using Grok's chat completions API to build the startup name generator. Um, just a bit of context to understand how this works is, if you can see here, it says that the Grok chat completions API processes a series of messages and generates output responses. It also has a couple of other important information like the required parameters, the optional parameters, and other information you need to know about this API. For this video, we'll only be focusing on using the required parameters. So let me quickly explain them. The first one is the model, and Grok actually has different types of models. So if you click on this, we would see the Lama model by Meta, Mixtral by Mistral, and Gemma by Google. So you have the option to choose whichever model you want to use. And from the description here, you see that the language model is pretty much what is in charge of performing the completion. And then we also have messages, which is a list of messages in the conversation so far, and that each of these messages is an object that has the following field, like the role, which can be system, user, assistant, and the content, which is pretty much the description of the text, right? It's like the message you want to send to Grok. Um, we also have the name and the seed as well. Um, so now that we know that, let's go back to our start of the TS file and actually start writing the code. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a function called gets message that takes a parameter called um, business description of type string. And then this function is also going to store the, um, the content that I'm going to pass 
when I, I use the fetch method and call the request body. So if we go to Grok's documentation and click on quick start, um, it has different samples on how to utilize this API. So I want to use that of JSON, as you can see here, covers the messages, the role, the content, and the model. So the things we talked about when I was explaining what the chat completion API does. So I'm going to copy this, and then I'm going to go to um, the Zoopla portal, and I'm going to paste that here into this get message function. So one of the things that I'm going to update here is I'm going to add a role called system, which like I mentioned earlier, is pretty much what you'd use to define what the assistant is supposed to think it is. So in my case, I wanted to think it's a software developer that wants to build a startup. The next thing I'm going to do is update the message of the content, because this is pretty much what is going to be sent to Grok when um, anybody makes a request to this API. So I'm going, I'm going to ask you to generate three names that I can call a startup based on this business description. And then it should only respond with the startup name, um, startup name suggestion without adding any other information. Because I noticed that when you ask, send a message to Grok, it responds back to like some context before giving you your, your answer, which is okay. But for the context of this API, I just need the startup name suggestions. And I'm also going to ask you to generate new names each time I, um, I send a message. And finally, that it should format the message as JSON and it puts them in an array. So now that we have this, the next thing I'm going to do is actually update this, um, this part of the function, which is what handles the API requests. So I'm going to asynchronously pass the, the JSON data from the request body. And then I'm also going to assess its type to ensure that it contains a business description property of type string, and then extract that property into a variable called uh, business description. And then I'm going to use the fetch method to send a request to Grok server. The first thing I want to pass here is the um, base URL for the API. So if I click on open, open AI compatibility on Grok's documentation, I'll be able to copy that base URL here, and then I will paste that here. And then the part that we're trying to target is chat completion. So we're going to quickly update that completion. Awesome. And then I'm going to add a post method and then the body. And then I'm also going to add headers. Two headers I'm going to add here are authorization and content type. To get Grok's API key, I will go to console.grok.com slash keys. I'll click on create API key. I'm just going to add a name for it. Let's say Zuplo and Grok test. And then I'll click submit. This will automatically generate that API key for me, which I will copy and go back to Zuplo portal. So instead of just hard coding or just pasting the API key here, which is not safe, what I can do is use Zuplo to save this API key as a secret in an environment variable. So it's a lot safer. Um, so I'm going to do that by going to settings, looking on environment variables, and adding it. So I'll call this Grok API key, paste the value, click on secret, and then click save. Awesome. So if I click on get code snippets, what is going to show me the code snippet that I can use to actually import this into my code. So I'll copy that and go to my setup of TS file where I will paste the code. And then what I'm going to now do is copy this um, variable that stores the API key, and I'm going to pass that here. So now that I've added the API key, I'm going to read the response and pass it into a variable called response data so that we can test this out and see um, progress we've made so far. And I'm going to save my changes and then go to route so I can actually test this out. So here I'm going to add a business description and a value for that business description, right? So what I pretty much want now is for it to generate possible startup names based on this description here. So I'll click test. Beautiful response of 200, which is successful. And you can actually see the content here. We have the Lunar Leap, we have Cosmic Climb and Astro Ascend, which is fantastic. So what I want here is just to get the content itself and not all of this other um, um, data that Grok sends back. So I'm going to just go to some formatting to the choices, to message and to content. So I'll go back to my setup.ts file and let me save this in a variable called startup names. 
And I'm going to now um, return this updated um, data with this startup news. All right, beautiful. So let's go back and test this again. Uh, let's use, well, make you the best developer in the world and then test it out. Beautiful. So now you see that it only returns just the content and some suggestions here are code mastery, DevOps lift, Elite products. Fantastic. So we've actually been able to build our startup name generator API. But as you all know, building is not where it stops. You need to secure the API, create a documentation for it, add rate limits and all of that. So I'm going to quickly do that with Zuclo. It's insane how fast it is to do that. So to add an API key, I'm going to click on add policy and select API key authentication and then click OK. So if I save my changes and test this API now, you'd see that it's not going to work. It's going to return a 401 unauthorized error because I no longer have access to it. So I am going to add a new um, API key consumer for a developer. And let's call the developer, developer DD for instance. Um, yeah. And then I'm going to add an email which would be this. And just some brief metadata on who this um, developer is. All right, once I save that, so I'll copy the API key and then go back to test it again. But this time I'm going to add an authorization header and pass the key. And if I click test, also it works again and generates some startup names that I can call this um, business. So now another thing that we can do is actually add rate limits to this API. So to do that, I will click on add policy, search for rate limits, and I'm going to update this to um, limit the rates by user. And I want it to just, I want each user to be able to make only two requests per minute. So if I click okay and save my changes and try to test this again, what you're going to see is it's going to work. It's going to work on first try. It's also going to work on second try. But when I try to do it the third time, it's not going to work again because I've reached my uh my rate limit. You see, it's actually it's so fast how you can do this with Zuclo. One more thing, let's um create a let's update our developer portal. So when you use um Zuclo as your API gateway, it's like build an API, it automatically generate a developer portal for you. So if I click here, I'm going to access that. And in this developer portal, the your users, like a developer who is trying to use your API, would be able to see their API key, the login, be able to test your API directly on the test console, and also see other descriptions, like recommendations on how to use this API. So I'm going to sign in since I actually used my email when I was creating that consumer for a fake developer using this API. So um, now that I've logged in, you see that it's going to show me the key. See here, developer DD. So I'm going to copy that and go to the console where I can actually test out this API. So you see, it already adds the API key for you. So what I just need to do here is pass that business description. And let's call this the best API management tool. What do we recommend to do? <laughs> let's see. So I click test. Oh, nice. So recommends API command, manages API, unified API assets. Really, really cool stuff. So you've seen how we've been able to use Zuko and Grok to quickly create an API and also go a step further to secure that API by adding an API key authentication, rate limits, and also using the developer portal that Zuko generated for us to test the API, to read the documentation about it, and also have access to our API key. So the opportunities and the things you can do with AI tools like Grok and an API management tool like Zuclo are truly endless. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe and like, and let us know if you have any questions in the comment section. Bye.